Hey everyone, my name is Justin, and today I'm going to show you how I made these turn signal intakes for my 97 Mazda Miata. I started by tearing open the lights. Both the front and the back of the housings need to come off in order to make this into an intake. The rear was pretty easy to remove with the Dremel, but the front lens was quite a bit tougher to cut through. I taped off a small portion of the lens that I wanted to keep and cut the rest off. On the Miata turn signals, there's a portion of the lens that's separate from the rest and in some countries, this area is used for a daytime running light. I'll be using this area for the new turn signal. I used a Dremel and a sanding disc to clean up the rough edges and then taped off the lens that I did not remove to avoid damaging it while working on it later. Next I scuffed up the entire inside of the housing where the shiny chrome plating was in order to provide some grip for the next steps. I used a coarse grit sandpaper for this and tried to get into all the nooks and crannies. After sanding the housing, I moved on to molding the intake. For this, I used epoxy sculpt modeling clay. This stuff is pretty amazing. It's a two component clay that you mix together and then you can sculpt it into any shape you want. It has about a one hour working time which gives you tons of time to mold and sculpt the product into any shape you want. I mostly used my hands to mold it, but small tools like a razor blade helps me get flat surfaces and finer details. You can also use water to help smooth the product out and blend any lines together. Since it's two component, it cures really hard and is also waterproof, freeze proof, and it doesn't shrink while it's drying. Once it cures, you can easily sand it and shape it even more. I mixed up a little at a time and worked on one area at a time until I was satisfied with the shape, often dipping my fingers in the water to help smooth out the clay. When I was satisfied with the shape of the intake, I let it sit for a full day to cure. 
The next day I started to fine tune the epoxy by sanding. I found the sandpaper got easily clogged up, so I tried other shaping tools like a file. A razor blade worked quite well as a scraper, but my favorite tool was a chisel. The epoxy seemed to work well with any ordinary woodworking tools. After spending some time sanding on it, it's starting to look less like a Play-Doh project and much more like an intake. The next step was to take it out to the car and see how it fit. The fitment looks decent on the top, but I definitely need more on the bottom to fill in this, this gap here. So I think I'll add a bit more epoxy along the bottom and fill this in and maybe round this corner a little better. I spent a little more time filling in the bottom and the edges look a lot nicer now. Nice and rounded and the edges are pretty smooth. Next I'm going to sand it with 220 grit to get the scratches out from shaping it and then I'll hit it with some primer. I spray painted primer on the intake but I wasn't happy with how smooth it was. I could see low spots and scratches and stuff so I sanded it all again and now I'm going to use some Bondo to try and fill all those low spots that you can see and get this as smooth as possible. I've been sanding what seems like forever, but it's really pretty smooth now. The last thing I'm going to do for the smoothing is to use some of this glazing putty and fill in just the tiny pinholes. I think next, instead of painting it, I'm going to figure out how to put a bulb in there. Here's what I've got going on for the rear. I've got this socket, which came from back here, and I've trimmed it all down from where it was and just retained the socket part. And I've also got this piece of PVC pipe that I cut from a coupling and I've got it shaped so that it will fit the socket and I'll JB weld those two together and then I'll JB weld that to the back of the housing and that'll be the socket for the light. For the paint on this project, I used Duplicolor products for the primer, base coat, and clear coat, and then a final clear coat using a two component clear in a can. Soon after the last coat of Duplicolor clear, I removed the tape over the lens so that I could get a clean line while the paint was still wet. If you wait until it dries, you risk the paint peeling up with the tape and leaving a jagged edge. The line made by the paint was pretty defined and I could feel it with my fingernail after it dried completely. And to prevent it from chipping, 
I decided I would wet sand the whole thing and clear coat it again to seal in the paint line. This also gave me the opportunity to shave the lettering off the front of the lens which gave it a much cleaner look. Once I had the whole light wet sanded, I used the two part clear coat. Since it's a two part clear in a can, you have to activate the hardener first by pressing a button on the bottom of the can. This activates the hardener and then you have 48 hours to use up the paint before it goes bad. This paint is fantastic and provides a much more durable finish than the cheap Duplicolor clear coat. Since it's going to be susceptible to rock chips being on the front of the car, this is absolutely necessary to avoid paint chips. enjoyed the video. Good luck making your own.